This is a module I like to do in the morning when you're fresh. <laughs> and that's one reason I do the pasta and the beads right after lunch, so that you're moving a little bit. But I'll try and go through this a little quicker, see what my target is. Move this. 45, all right, we'll have to hurry. We'll make it. Um, maybe on the next one. Okay, statistical activities. Basically, same kind of formula for the any process you're collecting, organizing, and interpreting numerical facts and results so that you can make decisions. We classify and manipulate data, and manipulate is maybe a, a bad word, but analyze, certainly, data <coughs> appropriately so that we can draw inferences, and we'll talk about inferences, too. And then we assemble them for presentation, as you'll see in this, di uh, this presentation and, and the next one. Uh, Showing data in the histograms as you made is a good way than saying, all right, you know, sigma, you know, I equals one to n, oh, God, we don't want to see that, okay? A histogram tells a story, okay? Other types of graph tell a really good story. So graphing data and doing good data display, we could talk about that for a whole day, but it's very important. But in the end, we're going to take those data that you collect we're going to make inferences, and we're going to make decisions. And those decisions have a cost impact, sometimes good, sometimes not. OK, and as I said, visual presentation is very good. That's kind of one of my specialties is creating visual diagrams for saving multi-contaminate problems in time or space. So you get sort of the four-dimensional component. They work like a champ especially in litigations, where juries who don't understand anything say, oh, I see the pie chart, I see the pretty colors, I get it, okay? You show them a formula. Stephen Hawking said, every time you put a formula in your book, it halves the number of readers, okay? Which is why I don't sell a lot of my books. <laughs> I'm, I'm like down in the you know, 10 to the minus 30 or something, and that, that sort of thing. So anyway, um, ultimately we're trying to reduce the decision risks. Now there's several aspects that we uh, usually go through. We design a sampling program. I think you're getting the feel with the incremental sampling that you just don't say, go get me some samples or soil, okay? You should be designing that sampling program. Everything from the material collect to the subsample to the lab protocols and so on. Um, in addition, we, through the DQO process, put in an allowable level of uncertainty. We know we're always going to have uncertainty. It's just the way life is. We just try and manage it. Uh, we collect and analyze the data. And then sometimes telling others what we found is the big, biggest part of it. Telling the story. Not lying, but just saying this is what it means. You know, if you have a report that said, you know, the concentration went up 10 times the former result. People tend to flip out. Okay, well, if it goes from 0.1 to 1, and your action level is 100, so what? You know, but somebody can pull out that statistic and make your life miserable.